very much, Astrid, and welcome everybody. Where we once and for all settle this debate: where is the best place to live in Portugal? It'll be settled tonight, won't it? You know, absolutely. That, that, that will be it. No further confusion on the matter. It now, was settled. It was settled on the very first round. In, indeed, indeed. So this mm. is just a formality, I think. Jerry's oh, thinking yeah. that. Yeah. What's what's weird about this? Um, I, I actually say the contenders tonight are Jerry, uh, Jerry Lawler, representing Central Portugal. I'll tell you more about him in just a moment. As I will with Michael Heron, re representing uh, Lisbon and the Targush Valley tonight in the final here. Um, the voting has already started. I've oh opened up, uh, really, I've opened up a, a poll on our YouTube channel. The link is there. And Jerry, you're already winning. You haven't really. No, opened I, I, I promise it wasn't me. I didn't even know we had that. Sorry. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> there was a there was a slight sense of unease and bitterness, uh, not, I... not 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 unlike some notable elections around the world from from the preceding heats. So tonight, I thought I'd go with the you know the electric version that can't be tampered with via YouTube. But the voting has already begun this. So some people are keen, I think, on the mouse already, and. Um, Four votes already with Jerry in the lead, Michael. Just I don't want to, uh, to destabilize you at this point, but just letting you know what's going on uh, with the voting so far. Only that's absolutely, absolutely shocking. I knew this was going to be rigged from the start. I knew this was a hatchet job. <laughs> <laughs> easy, easy. It's completely beyond my control, but so, <laughs> so interesting. <laughs> to, to <laughs> <laughs> that that's already what's going on there, and I will keep you up to date with that, folks. So, the format for this evening. Uh, the, uh, which I've uh, I put in my notes, the Portuguese punch up. It's all going to be good. I'm looking for a nice uh, clean scrap here, if, there, if that's not a contradiction. Um, in, in the red corner, let me present to you uh, Jerry Lawler representing Central Portugal. In the blue corner, uh, the Lisboeta, um, the lamping Lisboeta, I could call you, couldn't I? Michael Heron. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit about those two in just a moment. And we'll then go into five minutes uh, with each of those gentlemen. Basically along the lines of, you know, uh, central Portugal or, or Lisbon and Tugash Valley, best place to live in Portugal because, and they will have a chance to unfold their argument and you will be timed for that, gentlemen. Uh, then a, a few more questions that discover uh, the best and worst things and, and, a, and a surprise question for you um, as, as, as well, uh, gents and an audience, uh, just to further unpack the glory of, of each of their respective regions. And please do ask questions uh, through the comments in the chat as well. So if there's something you think uh, that they've missed or some, if you want to just heckle a little bit, that's all fine. You know, that boxing match style uh, atmosphere is very welcome here. We'll then go to a summing up and uh, they'll have three minutes again each to, um, to, to present their final case. And then I will look at the YouTube polling that I've mentioned already. So gentlemen, are you okay with that before I introduce you both? Um, Carl, can I, can I, heckling is fine, very happy with that, but I don't want anybody throwing their underwear. <laughs> he says that now. That, <laughs> <laughs> that, well, I think what you mean is like old boxer shorts that should really be rags. Probably, yes. Uh, he might yeah. be open to other styles of underwear. That I, might don't know, I don't know what boxing fights you've been to, Jerry, but I've never seen anyone throw <laughs> underwear into the ring. Oh, sorry. Oh, no, wait. That was, that was a Tom Jones concert. I'm sorry. OK, there we go. <laughs> Same thing. <laughs> an, easy mistake, an easy mistake to make there. So let's, <laughs> let's go for a further into, insight into the psyche of Jerry Lawler. <laughs> after that <laughs> living near um i nearly said al viagra which we which we playfully refer to it as it's actually al viazara um which he describes as halfway between tamar and coimbra uh, the capital of central portugal of course previously owned a holiday home in cabanas in the east algarve for 10 years before deciding to retire to central portugal in 2015 uh, moved to the present home in early 2017 and uh, been there for a few years now uh, obviously if you do the math um was CEO as, um, uh, for a multinational company based in the UK for 18 years before retiring, continued as a consultant for a further year, and then took a few years off uh, from, from big business before acquiring Expats Portugal. Uh, Jerry sees himself as the principal of the business and leaves all the hard work to Astrid and Sally, and then I do a little bit as well. Um, two daughters adopted from Russia and both now living and working in North Carolina, where we have a lot of friends uh, in North Carolina from Expats Portugal community. And so he tries to get over there as much as possible. And he's from Dublin, born and educated in Dublin, um, in case you weren't able to work that out uh, from his accent. Michael Heron now uh, of uh, 
Uh, he's a hybrid of British and Argentine uh, expat extraction. Uh, born in the UK and has lived in Portugal for seven years. During this time, Michael has lived in different parts of Lisbon. Uh, he's lived in Aroeira, south of the river, and uh, currently resides in San Domingo de Rana, which is halfway between Cascais and Lisbon, and he'll pronounce it much better than me, as he will uh, at the beach that he lives close to, which is uh, Carcavelos. He'll come back to that. Uh, he, he, oh, thank you. Uh, he is founder of Avonlight, a boutique consultancy business that provides business development, marketing, and communication services. And uh, he's been working with international companies and individuals looking to relocate or expand their operations to Portugal. So two fine figures of men in the ring tonight. Uh, so let's begin, shall we, um, with Jerry's first five minutes. Uh, Jerry, you were up against uh, Prosecco Peggy from the Algarve. It could be said that Michael had a slightly more difficult uh, trial against uh, Alan Tejo O'Neill and Mark from, from the North. Um, so let's see how you get on with your five minute, uh, oh, it looks like okay. a presentation, everybody. How about that then? There's only 78 pages, so it shouldn't take too long. Okay. okay. Someone please start the timer. <laughs> no, don't start it yet. I haven't started yet. Okay. Ding, ding, okay. Seconds out. Round one. All right. Tonight I'm going to get down and personal. So we're talking about central Portugal. I take it everybody can see this screen. Uh, central Portugal um, is just starts just south of Porto, across to the Spanish border and just north of Lisbon across to the Spanish border. So this is roughly the area that we're talking about. I live under this star here, as, as uh, Carl said earlier, maybe 20 minutes drive from Tomar and about 30 minutes from Coimbra and about one hour 30 from uh, Lisbon. OK, um, so. This is where I live. This is my property here, and this is Google Earth. And I wanted to show you this to give you an idea of how private it can be with all these lovely hills and views and stuff. We have vineyards here in front and open spaces here at the back. And in fact, the property includes this area here, this field, and this woodland here. We have only two neighbors very close to us. And yet within 10 minutes, we can reach out Al Viazra where we can find our butcher, baker, candlestick maker, and everything else we need. So this is my house, and I'm going to go into a little bit of detail on the house. It's a living air space of 270 square meters, a land area of 12,000 square meters, which is about three acres. It's a high standard build with underfloor heating throughout, well insulated, a B plus energy rating, which is really good. And all rooms open onto south facing terraces. So we get the benefit of the sun uh, coming through these big windows here in the winter. In the summer, the sun is a little bit higher, so it stays off and manages to, and, and the house stays cool uh, during the summer. Here's a little bit more of the house. Just to give you an idea, this is our uh, Portuguese barbecue area. We've got a bread oven and a typical Portuguese uh, barbecue grill there. Um, now, this is the view that I wake up to every morning. A little bit cold on this particular day, but um, this is the view right now from the room where I am sitting. I could turn my computer around and show you that view. And there's another. And there's the pool. And then we have a woodland uh, with cork trees that have recently been harvested um, a few more years before they can be done again, more woodland. And then finally, we have a field that I showed you on the earlier picture. And the reason I brought this up is because this field has a ruin here, which we could actually build on if we ever decide to do that for investment purposes. So that property, uh, I, it's not for sale, but um, I would guess it's some today's value somewhere around 350,000 euros. This morning, I took a look on uh, Google to see what sort of what similar property I could find in the Lisbon area, and this is what I came up with. They're all similar in size in living space, but. There's no land or very little land because that's just not available in, in, in that area. But you can see here the prices around about a million euros to get something similar in the area that uh, Michael is going to defend so well in the next few minutes. And while I was here, I thought I'd pop in and check out the Algarve as well. 
And here we are, same thing, all similar size properties, but with, with some land, but, but nothing like what I have. But again, all looking at around uh, 700,000 uh, as a base price. So house prices in central can be 70% less than similar houses in the Lisbon region, and that would be without the land, 50% less than similar region, similar houses in the Algarve. Um, so why then live in Portugal? Well, clearly there's value for money. There's a rural lifestyle, but not far from anywhere. Excellent road network with very little traffic. UNESCO World Heritage sites all over the place and loads more history. And I touched on this in uh, big time in the, in the area of the day. An abundance of Roman ruins, castles, natural caves, walking and hiking trains, unpopulated beaches, world-class serving, and the hidden treasures, the river beaches. That is central Portugal in a nutshell. Thank you. Good You've got 12 seconds left. Oh, um, dance around the ring, Joe. I'll, I'll pass that over to Michael. <laughs> Still, if, a lot of confidence tonight. If, if you could unshare, that would be great, because I need to look at Michael, see if he's okay. He could be lying on the canvas at this yeah. stage. I was, I was only able to see um, the presentation and no clock or anything and, and not Michael's face. So um, I think Jerry came up fighting there. Um, both, both fists. Um, I, 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 very different uh, approach in this in this particular battle in the final tonight. Thank you, Jerry. Over to you, Michael, for your five uh, opening. Thank you very much. Well, I think we all enjoyed seeing pictures of Jerry's um, house, and you know that was lovely. Very kind of him to share that with us. Uh, and you know he's absolutely right. Um, pr house prices uh, in central uh, Portugal are, are significantly less than than the Lisbon and Tejas um, area. However, you can also find uh, properties outside of Lisbon for a really good value, if that's your sole consideration. But um, I'm gonna focus more on something else, which I think is even more important than, than anything we've really been speaking to, uh, speaking about up until this point. And this is gonna really be my theme throughout um, the, this, this sort of this uh, fight, let's call it a fight, because that's what it is, a friendly fight, a friendly boxing fight. Um, and unlike Jerry, I don't need a, a PowerPoint presentation, you know, to, um, to, to print it up. I'm just going to, to, to speak to speak the truth to you. Um, and um, the theme is light. The theme is light. Uh, now, this might sound like a silly thing to say, because, well, Portugal's famous for being sunny. It's famous for having, you know, 300 days of, of sunshine a year. But I can assure you that there is far more sunshine in the Lisbon and Tejas area than any other part of Portugal and light as well. Um, and the beauty of the light in Lisbon is something quite astonishing. It is unbelievable. The number of hours of sunshine that we get, the clearness of the day due to the dominant winds from the construction materials to the variance of geography of the city opening up at the south of the Tagus River that reflects that light all day long is something absolutely astonishing. And don't forget that Lisbon favours the shades that attract and reflect that light. The buildings are painted with this warmth, this sandy yellow, rich and blushing pink, which you may think architecturally looks a bit ridiculous, but it's done on purpose because this all adds to the beauty uh, of this light, which is so, so important. And I'm gonna come on to in a second why it's so important for, for health reasons. I'm gonna share a personal story with a client of mine who actually saved his life by moving to Lisbon. And I'm not joking, by the way, Carl, so stop smirking because I know you think I'm giving you banter, but it's not, this is, this is God's honest truth. But Lisbon is genuinely uh, one of the most popular locations uh, in the world for filming uh, commercials, especially car commercials, because of the light, because it looks so amazing on film. Now, I'm going to talk to you about the health benefits of natural light, because like, like most of you thinking about moving to Portugal, like myself, who's been here for seven years, Jerry, who's been here a lot longer than me, Astrid as well, we moved here for the weather, but we didn't just move here with the weather, we moved here because we wanted to have a higher quality of life. And I think uh, Lisbon, is the, at the forefront and the area because of the amount of sunlight. And I'm gonna tell you a story about a client of mine. He's a gentleman who's about 75 years old and he had a lot of health problems. Uh, he'd had a lot of medical tests. No one really knew what was wrong with him. They, they thought it was neurological. They thought it was problems to do his blood because he couldn't keep his balance. And it turned out that the reason he had so little energy when all the blood tests came back because he had a lack of vitamin D. 
and he had some inject injections to boost, uh, to supplement his vitamin D. And his doctor said to him, this is not enough. He said, there is somewhere you could move to which would guarantee you that you would get the most vitamin D. And I bet you can all guess where that doctor suggested <laughs> was Lisbon. Now, the reason for that, and for those of you that obviously understand a lot about vitamin D, but when vitamin D, um, when, when exposed to sunlight, the skin absorbs vitamin D. It's a critical nutrient that prevents bone loss. It reduces the risk of heart disease, weight gain, a lot of cancers. And there's a reason that it's called the sunshine vitamin. Um, and it also doesn't discriminate based on whether you get your sunlight indoors or outdoors so it doesn't mean you have to be outside all the time but actually if you're inside and getting that lovely Lisbon light that's equally good the other thing that it does and this is something that maybe some of our audience from Scandinavia might be able to uh, um, relate to because the suicide rate is okay uh, it wards off seasonal depression uh, improves sleep and it reduces all sorts of other health risks and I'll go into other reasons as to why um you know, this part of the country is so wonderful. But I think from a health point of view, uh, we can all agree that one of our primary reasons for moving to this beautiful country is to live longer and live better. And Lisbon is the best place in Portugal to do that without question. Wow, what an unusual and, and, and fascinating approach to this first round there. So well, it's kind of like, left. oh, a few seconds left if you want to, Mike. A few seconds left. Uh, no, so I'm good. I'm good. And I, and I, I agree, Carl. I think it's brilliant. Well, well, Jerry and I had to raise our game a bit and do something different and perhaps, you know, share things that aren't in travel guide books. And I think that's why we needed to add value today and give everyone something different, not something they could just Google on the Internet. OK, so some punches to the face and, and a few in the kidneys so far uh, this evening. An un most unusual bout um, tonight. Um, Thomas makes the comment, I didn't realise that it was literally Jerry's house versus the Turkish Valley. <laughs> No, no, I just, it's the only one I have the, the specifics of, so I used it. Fair enough. And Louise was heartened to find out that a well-insulated B-rated house, there's hope, somebody who is losing hope about uh, cold and damp in Portugal, so that's good to know as well. And Abbott says, Jerry, how do the non-tycoons like us choose a place? So let's see, we'll, we'll, we'll further furnish the arguments as we go into the second round. I'm going to wrap these two questions up together that you, that you could answer if you will. Um, going back to you, Jerry. Obviously, you want to be singing the praises of, of, of where you are in your region. But what's the worst thing about it? So tell us a bit more about the best of it and the worst of it so that people can get a full picture. All right. OK, well, I suppose um, I would be thinking about this, Carl. The, 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 the best of living in this region for me is waking up to the sounds and views of nature at its best. No traffic. No, no city, no light pollution, nothing like that. Just, uh, you know, a few dogs barking, chainsaws firing up at eight o'clock in the morning. Occasionally you've got to deal with that. Um, but it really is just, you know, waking up to, to nature uh, at its absolute best. And also, um, I like in Portugal, as I've sort of, uh, in, in Central rather, the proximity to so many interesting places to visit. And I typed, went through those in some detail in, in our earlier presentation. The worst thing about this area, especially in comparison with, with the Lisbon area, I suggest, is the lack of diversity of restaurants. Um, there, are, there are not that many ethnic restaurants or different foreign restaurants and so on to choose from. But that aside, we have everything here that we could possibly need. And of course, we also have another city close by, Coimbra, um, which in, in itself is a beautiful city and um, probably offers everything that Lisbon has to offer, but on a smaller scale. OK, that's very honest and excellent there. And of course, what's best about it, as you say, you know, the sounds of nature can actually be quite disturbing to some people, can't they? Cockerels and dogs and chainsaws, as you put it. I mean, you know, for people who love the countryside, those are very reassuring sounds. Somebody who's not used to that could could be quite disturbed by that. But thank you for, for that very uh, authentic and uh, honest and generous uh, up and down side uh, round there. For, uh, Michael, to compete with that now, please. So best and worst, Michael. Before we go to you, um, I think John is still a bit sour about the result with the Algarve. Prosecco, <laughs> John is still saying Prosecco Peggy should have won. With <laughs> Over to you, Michael. Uh, the best <laughs> and the worst, please. Yeah. Well, you know, again, the, these things are so subjective, aren't they? But I would say the best thing about 
Lisbon and the Tagus area, I think, is 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 the variety of lifestyle that you can have um, because you can live in the city in Lisbon or you can live on the outskirts or you can live closer to one of the many beaches, whether that's Cascais or Carcavelos, where I live, or even crossing the, the, the Tagus River to the other side. So I would just say, for me, that the best part is the variety and obviously... You know, it is it is fair to say that, and this will come into my negative part, I guess, a little bit. But there's another negative part I want to talk about as well. Um, but I guess you know, it is more expensive. Housing prices are more expensive compared to central Portugal. That is undoubtable. Um, but there is also a lot of variety as well, uh, and the market is a lot bigger. So it's actually, I would say, arguably easier. To, to find a property in this area than central. Maybe central, you're going to have to buy land, you're going to have to build something, and it's going to take a long time. And that's there's nothing wrong with that. If that's your plan and you're happy to wait, again, there's plus or minuses to both. I would say the biggest negative is the traffic. <laughs> that is undeniable. Um, the traffic, especially if you're working, hopefully most of you won't be, you'll be retired, but for those of you that have to work like me, I mean, now in COVID, it's not, it's not so much of a problem, but I live, to give you an idea, I live when Sao Domingo de Rana, as Carl said, which is halfway between Lisbon and Cascais, and it's uh, a car journey that now, or in no traffic, would take me 10 minutes to get into Lisbon, but uh, on a bad day, it could take me 45 minutes easily. Um, so that can be frustrating, but... Um, you won't care because you'll be enjoying the view and the light so much. And it's also a great opportunity for you to listen to the Good Morning Portugal um, radio show, as I do um, in the morning when I'm on my way in the car. So it's actually not not too bad. Um, but yeah, that I would say that's probably the the, the only negative is the, the traffic and obviously the way the Lisboetas drive, if I can be diplomatic. Um, if you remember, someone used the analogy of... Uh, was it Pluto, the cartoon character yes, who would be yeah. really well behaved but get really angry behind the car? I think that sums up the, the Lisboeta. They're so polite. They're such wonderful people. But as soon as they get behind the wheels of a car, they go absolutely bonkers. So apart from that, it's perfect. But yeah, to be honest, uh, that is the one negative. Brilliant. OK, so watch out for that personality change behind the wheel there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Pluto from, from Disney. Um, now you, you have given birth to a new hashtag tonight, which may well be taken up by the uh, Portuguese health authorities. Hashtag for vitamin D in Lisbon, you need to be. Uh, Anna Vieira there. Thank you, Anna, uh, from our Ask Our Expats team. Very good. A uh, bit of copywriting there and, and marketing for Lisbon. I'll charge for that, I'll charge for that later. <laughs> yeah, yeah and, and I'm definitely warming to your um, arguments there, Michael, with the suggestion of people listening to the Good Morning Portugal show. But I will not be influenced in such a, um <laughs> obvious way there, um, clearly. So, Jerry, thank you, Michael. Thank can, you, can, I, can I interrupt here and just make... I mean, we do have sunlight in Central, you know? It's that... No, true, true. It's Michael. a little bit... Yeah, it's a little... Yeah. We it's have a little that. bit of me. We have oh, electricity. Yeah. We can actually <laughs> listen to the radio. As well. Amazingly, we have all this stuff now. <laughs> yeah, it's true. He's right. They have got electricity now in central Portugal. So obviously what follows from that is things like traffic lights, cash machines, and lots of other modern conveniences, I believe, in central Portugal these days. Oh, yeah, lots of things like that. Yeah, <laughs> kettles that you plug in and, you know, the boil the water. It's amazing the stuff we've got now. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so a lot of people here will have been poring over uh, tourist guides. Uh, Wikipedia, all sorts of reference materials for finding out about where they want to live in Portugal. Um, let's go where most of those guys don't go. Um, and um, tell us something about your region that they won't, that you think they won't know about, the kind of, like a secret weapon or the things that don't make it into the tourist guys. Jerry, would you begin that, please? Okay. Down the road from me, we have Tomar, which is, uh, you can see the picture in my background here tonight. Tomar, um, when you visit Tomar, you can visit the Knights of the Templar Castle and Convent, the best preserved medieval synagogue in Portugal, an incredible 16th century aqueduct, and would you believe, a matchbook museum. <laughs> and that's just to name a few in a small little town in the middle of central Portugal, and that's pretty typical of any town that you will find in Portugal. Coimbra, our nearest city or our large city. Coimbra has been settled since the year 711. Can you believe that? It was the first capital of Portugal and the first two kings of Portugal are actually entombed there. And then we have nearby Coimbra, if I pronounce that properly, probably not, 
It has one of the largest Roman settlements ever discovered in Portugal. And all those things are on my doorstep, 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes away. Um, so those are some of the things that uh, I like about uh, this area. And perhaps everybody doesn't know of them all. Amazing, amazing. Yeah, lot, so many wonderful secrets, the sort of things you, some of those you might see in the tourist book, but when you put them all together like that, it's quite incredible, isn't it? Like a little surprise around every corner. Michael, please do the same. Yeah, it's a difficult one, isn't it? Because I think Lisbon and the Tages is probably the region that has been the most uh, talked about and covered in the media and travel guides. So it's actually quite difficult for me to think of a secret, but I think I have found one. Uh, and I've actually discovered it uh, last year for the first time so we bought we bought an apartment in Mondijo as an investment where my mother-in-law is now living and um, Mondijo is on the south bank it's it's a lovely town it's got about population of about 40 40,000 people something like that but what's fascinating about Mondijo is that there is actually a beach in front of it on the south bank and it's called um, Praia Fluvial there's actually four four beaches beaches called Fluvial uh, and what's amazing about it is you never get tourists it's very very quiet there's a couple of beautiful cafes on that beach uh, you can actually swim in that part of the Tagus it's perfectly clean you have to wait until quite late in the day for the tide to actually come up sufficiently so you're not having to walk sort of you know 100 meters into the water mm. um, but what's beautiful about it and this is something that is often overlooked is actually the sun sets on the other side of the city so it's the only part where you can actually see the sunset behind Lisbon in the summer and honestly I've seen sunsets all over the world and it is the most beautiful sunset I've ever seen in my life and it's literally a 15 minute drive from my house and something I didn't know existed and I've been living here for seven years and I only discovered that for the first time uh, last year and indeed you know things I'm discovering all the time by living in my area just because it's so varied again you know Jerry, Jerry's is as well so I'm not taking anything away from him on that but yeah for me that would be the, the secret I kind of, I kind of uh, was contemplating even sharing it because I was a bit annoyed. <laughs> you know, people start uh, start bombarding it. So I hope you can all keep that secret with me because I don't want uh, to have uh, lots of people there uh, in the summer. So I, if we uh, can split to that, everybody that. now, yeah, that'd be great if everyone could keep that confidence. I don't know about how we're going to do that on YouTube. I just sort of muffle. Oh yeah, good point. Yeah, <laughs> forget it then. <laughs> I forgot this was being posted to YouTube. <laughs> a, good point, a good point. You know, south of the river is the big secret. Isn't it? <laughs> Wait, maybe maybe you could bleep it out, and then if you're going to charge people for premium content on Expats Portugal, you could put a link and charge people. Oh, that's like that. This is why yeah. he's a consultant. This is why Michael Aaron is a consultant. Excellent tip. And uh, that's been written down by me, Astrid, and Jerry, and Sally there, I think. Uh, <laughs> I, I shouldn't really be helping you, but I did hear the other day that uh, a Silicon Valley is planned on that side of the river as well. That's Is that a plan for Lisbon? Just useful content for, for, for yeah. people who choose. Yeah. yeah. Right, right on that beach. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? Well, I mean, we've got the air, the airport being built as well. So I think that that the plan is, and the whole of Setúbal, I think, will end up being a sort of a mega city in the next ten years. Um, so it's actually a good idea to buy there now, because well, to give you an idea, the property I bought uh, two years ago has already gone up fifty percent in value in two years. Houses, okay. Um, two property tycoons in the ring tonight. Amazing. Um, they even got colour TVs last week, apparently in Central, says Andrew, getting into the spirit of things. Um, uh, Western Central region is more cosmopolitan. Just a few comments coming in now from, from our... Uh, not much heckling going on, really. Uh, more, more just sort of polite conversation, I would say. Most unusual, a boxing match. But anyway, um, yeah, Western Central region is more cosmopolitan than Eastern Central region, which is more rural. Uh, um, Andy, the doc, chipping in, our resident doc uh, in Leria, of course, which he, which uh, is included in central Portugal. We have the first paper mill still working, powered by water. Yeah, P Portugal, a great producer of paper, obviously, from the, the trees, the, the plantations that you see of eucalyptus. Uh, hey, Jerry, what about the beaches? I love Foge de Aurelio and somebody else saying, uh, yeah, great river beaches in central. Uh, a personal question from Colin. Jerry, are you a farmer or do you use staff? to look after the <laughs> to answer that. a Lisbon secret from Paul Louise and Lottie is uh, is the money museum great for children and adults and ironically the money museum is free to get into isn't that great um, yes I think I mentioned the stunning beaches and most so unpopulated too says Jerry about the uh, beaches both inland 
and on the coast. Uh, yes, we wanted confirmation of Montijo. Thank you, Anna, for doing that in the comments. M-O-N-T-I-J-O. Uh, however, more pollution from the airport. There's the heckling. You want heckling, Carl, says Thomas? I got heckling. As some of you know, I can't be here and not make this point. Why choose? Uh, what you're looking for could be the Ribatejo, the Turkish Valley, under an hour from Lisbon in central Portugal, the best of both worlds. So he's just coming in with his own personal agenda there, I think. But that is a good shout, Thomas. It is a really good shout. Uh, the the um, unknown, I would say, generally speaking, Ribatejo area there. OK, final question from me for now, and there will be others probably to follow from our a wonderful audience tonight. But I, I've got a slightly different question for you. Jerry, to start again here. Um, if your region of Portugal were a Hollywood star, Jerry, who would they be and why? Is Jerry still here? Have I, have I knocked him out already? Gone. He, he's a te technical he's knockout, possibly. He's, yeah. he, he's muted. Jerry, oh, you're yeah. muted. Jerry, he just, unmute yourself. He's psyching us out, yeah. or psyching you out anyway, Michael. He is, yeah, he is. He's working. <laughs> yeah. 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 He's, he's good. Sorry, I had a minor crash. My super duper broadband system of at least three megabytes per second just just went down to less than one. <laughs> how, how unfortunate the timing with that! <laughs> I thought I thought you needed some help, Michael. Yeah, you know thank you for that, mate. I appreciate all that it. All stuff about the sunlight and all that, all that nonsense. You know, as though nowhere else in the world has got sunshine. Come on. <laughs> Messing with you, Michael. He's messing with you. I love it. Give banter. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so, what is what is central Portugal for me? Well, it's beautiful, it's charming, it's elegant, and it's peaceful. Hold so, on, Jerry. Are we talking about Hollywood star here, or are you going into your final summing up? Or... No, we're talking about central we're Hollywood star. So, oh, central oh, Portugal, so yeah, yeah, yeah. again, is beautiful, charming, elegant, and peaceful. So, it has to be Sophia Loren. That it? That's Job it. done? Leaving it there. He's leaving it because yeah. everyone, everyone kind of knows what that means. Hopefully, Lisbon is, isn't also Sophia Loren. Let's no. find from Michael Heron now. Hollywood no. star. And why? Well, I've got I've gone for Judy Dench. Um, and the reason being she's she's beautiful, she's elegant, she's celebrated, but she was also discovered very late and too late. So much like her acting career, where she didn't actually land her first big role until she was about 58. Lisbon and the Tagus region is also a gem that has gone undiscovered for a long time. And once it has, it's been winning all the awards, all the tourism awards, all the best, you know, part of the, the world to visit in three days, best wherever. Da, da, da. So, yeah, I would say for me, it would be Dame Judy Dench. Very good. Excellent. I really... That was paints a, pa a thousand words is that right yes um, however paul thinks that uh, central is more like john wayne um, and Liz and, jo and john who is still smarting about the algarve defeat yeah, thinks yeah. that lisbon is more like Pee Wee herman <laughs> team judy dench for the win there's <laughs> rebecca um, thank you rebecca um, <laughs> let's let's go to this uh, so thank you very much those those are my questions you've got your final summing up to do but let's see what people are asking this could be a bit of a gift to you Michael here from uh, you are tonight. I hope I pronounced your name correctly. How are the winters in central Portugal? You'll get a crack at that as well, Michael. So how are the winters in central Portugal, Jerry? With an underfloor heating? Uh, yeah, per perfectly warm and cosy where I am. <laughs> <very much. laughs> there was frost in one of your pictures, mate. <laughs> yeah, it's a spray stuff. You, you buy that. In the, there's a Chinese shop in Lisbon where you buy that. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, if it gets a bit too warm, Jerry sprays on some um, some. But well, he's feeling nostalgic about missing England. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Put yeah. some. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so uh, Jerry uh, copes well um, with the winters in, in, in central Portugal. What about you, Michael? How, what, how well, you, I'll, what winter I'll, like I'll, in I'll tell you a funny anecdote, and this is genuine. So this winter was the first time in about 50 years that we actually had uh, frost to the point where I caught my neighbours taking pictures of their frozen windscreen in their car outside because <laughs> they had never seen it before. So that tells you everything you need to know about where I live. I live in probably the most mild part of Europe that you'll ever find consistently all year round. And that is not a joke. It never goes below 10 degrees. It's normal to have barbecues on Christmas Day with 18 degrees if you want. And then the best part is in the summer, it never gets, unlike the Algarve, it never gets above 30 32 degrees very rarely and we've got this wonderful atlantic breeze 
that is cool in the summer and doesn't blow in the winter. So we get warm and mild winters and we get lovely summers that aren't too hot. Um, so there you go. That's, that's my summing up. Fabulous. Wonderful. Sounds unbelievable, says Tammy. We just had a, a hard freeze this morning. You can put that behind you. Uh, Thomas, who will actually, this, by popular demand, we'll be getting together um, a, a building special uh, mm -hmm. on how to deal with damp and cold in Portugal. Yes. It's a much requested subject and Thomas is helping us get together a special webinar on that. But it says here, damp cold is a, a product of certain types of housing which can occur in any area of Portugal or Southern Europe for that matter. There is nothing to choose between Lisbon and Central for this. He says very fairly, uh, only between the type of property you buy. Uh, good call. Thank you for, very much for that, um, Thomas. Uh, Paul Richard says, I was in Lisbon in December. Rain, rain, rain. Thought I was in Manchester, UK. So but I think Paul's dishing it out equally, though, to both you, uh, John Wayne at Central Portugal and, and to Lisbon as well there. So uh, equal heckling. Uh, so let's go to the, the, the final summing up from you both. Uh, Jerry, if you could tell us uh, in three minutes, uh, if you could be on the timer again, Astrid, for this, I'd be most grateful. Uh, Jerry, tell us a little bit more about Sophia and how, how we can fall in love with her even more. I'm not telling you any more about Sophia Loren. I'm keeping all of that to myself and to my dreams. Thank you very much. Say. <laughs> Ding dong. <laughs> um, well, I, I guess I, I'm, I'm reminded of what um, Prosecco Peggy said when we first debated uh, Central and the Algarve. And Peggy came to the conclusion that there's a special place in Portugal for everyone. You just need to find it. And I think that's so right. And I think, you know, all, all fun aside, um, Portugal is a, it is a magical country to live in. It's safe, it's secure, it's peaceful, it's, uh, it's, it's calm and it's quiet. Really this debate is pretty much, do you want to live in a rural area or do you want the city life? And, and, and so that becomes a sort of a binary decision, really. It's either yes, you do, or no, you don't. Um, so the only, the only thing I can argue against that, really, is that in Central, you can have the best of both. You can live the rural life, but you can be in commutable distance to Lisbon and to Porto and, and certainly Coimbra um, and enjoy all that those wonderful cities have to offer. I actually love Lisbon. I love visiting Lisbon. I love any opportunity. Generally, Astrid, Carl, and I try to meet in Lisbon, and I love, you know, Astrid will pick out a, a, another restaurant that we haven't been to, and, 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 and that's great. I, I, I really enjoy spending my time in Lisbon, but I also enjoy coming back here and enjoying the peaceful countryside and the area that I live in. Thank you very much. That's it, Great. Carl. Beautiful, beautiful summing up there for Central Portugal. Um, I'm going to put the voting link in to the chat again in just a moment because we are going to be going to voting as soon as Michael has told us a little bit more how we should fall in love even further with Judy Dench, Dame Judy Dench. Well, you know, I completely agree with Jerry, actually. Um, you know, it's a bit like arguing who's got the better car, the Ferrari or the Lamborghini. You know, it's so subjective. And um, I think it's great for everyone to see just how wonderful this country is and how passionate Jerry and I are. Um, genuinely are about our areas and you know we both live different lifestyles and that's the beauty of this country that you can you can choose to live whatever lifestyle you want and um, but I guess you know what I love about my area is that you can you can live that more rural lifestyle if you want but you're also close to the city and you're close to everything else but then equally I love central I love central Portugal I absolutely adore Coimbra and all the areas around that equally I love Porto I love the Algarve I love the Alentejo um, so it's uh, yeah it's it's a difficult one uh, for me to sum up but I would say you know probably probably the fact that I've been here for seven years and prior to that I'd lived in different countries I've lived in Spain I've lived in Belgium obviously I'm from Norwich originally I've lived in London I've even lived in Devon uh, which Carl and I have a connection strangely with that but um, I would say you know there is a reason that I've stayed here for this long and that my family are here and that we're so settled and it is just a wonderful country um, and you know if, for, for any of you that are thinking about moving here whether it's Lisbon, Tagus or Central Portugal, wherever that may be, you know, I wish you the best of luck and, and, and go for it because you won't regret it. You won't regret it. It will, it will change your life. And, you know, what I was saying earlier was a bit tongue in cheek about the light, because obviously there is sunlight and plenty of sunlight in Central Portugal and other parts of Portugal as well. But it is a genuine health um, 
advantage uh, to living here and it, you, it will add years of your life and, and I can I can honestly say that I am a different person since I've been living in Portugal and that doesn't mean I'm necessarily more laid back or more easygoing you know which is the stereotype of when you move to southern Europe nothing like that at all I still have a you know I run my own consultancy business and work very hard but I would say there's just something about my demeanor now where, which I notice is different and it's got to be because of the the, the weather and the, the lifestyle and everything and I just wake up with a massive smile on my face and I think being able to see the sun most of the year it's just so so important it really really is it can't be underestimated and I know there are plenty of places in the world that you get that but I think for people from the UK especially one the US but anywhere anywhere really Portugal is just so accessible uh, and it's just a wonderful place and uh, you know always happy to talk about it and happy to yeah, continue to debate it with Jerry, but it, it feels difficult to sum it up. Super. No, you've done it. You've done a beautiful job there. You've done a beautiful job there. I'm, I'm pressing the connection now. The voting link is now in the chat, fellas. I mean, honestly, you two. Normally, there's a fight, and after the result, the boxers hug each other and say, "Oh, I love you, man. That was amazing." But you started doing that in the last round, basically getting all sort of lovey dovey about about uh, Portuguese. <laughs> <laughs> I, I completely understand it, and it hasn't helped at all for people to decide where to go because it's still, as we've discovered, every time we talk about the best place to go um, in Portugal, um, we, you know, there is something great to be said for pretty much everywhere. Um, so you have to come and check it out for yourself, do a tour, or, or you know, or, or, or come over and base yourself maybe in Central and have a look around. Um, Roberta saying, I, publicly declaring her vote for Central Portugal. I'll get, I'll just. Go through a few comments so we can look at the final vote on YouTube in just a moment. Um, true, Rebecca, I have come to hate winters in the UK. I think we've all been there. I'm not sure what the original comment was. Uh, let me just go back a little bit. But people saying, uh, beautifully said, uh, thank you, Michael, uh, from you. Uh, great words, Michael, from Paul Richards. And um, agreed, Michael, uh, John saying that. And, and there were uh, similar sentiments about what uh, how Jerry approached that, that, you know, it's really about what you want. Um, rather than us um, having a massive scrap and deciding once for all which is the best part of Portugal. Um, there was some talk as well about um, allergies and I could just see the um, yeah where, where, where might that be the case? What about mosquitoes? Those sort of questions. So perhaps after we've got the result, we can do a little bit of uh, hanging out and, uh, and networking and um, socialising and uh, just answer those uh, extra questions that you that you brought up this evening um so paul louise um paul or louise uh, saying that they agree with thomas dampness depends on the house construction and the environment in which it is built very good point that made by thomas there and uh, endorsed by paul or louise or both uh, this winter was the harshest adds thomas in 50 years with two to three weeks of bitter cold in many regions and sporadic torrential rain which has led to the most beautiful spring the silver lining uh, but Portugal throughout gets its fair share of rain it really needs it and I'm sure Anna will tell us in Portuguese the wonderful phrase no rain no wine uh, which we should remember when we get caught out in a storm <laughs> I think it, it's worth remembering that uh, I second Paul's vote on Jerry so Jerry's house I think is probably one tonight <laughs> that's one <laughs> That's one winner. Uh, Virginia says, my vote goes to Lisbon for a starting point. A, a good call. Base yourself in the very heart of things in the capital and then have a look around from there, of course, because you're connected to the rest of the country by wonderful road and rail systems. Yeah, Paul, I vote Jerry just on his house. Um, and the, the mosquito question that will hang in the air just as those little rascals do. So I will go to YouTube now. Uh, while you're there, folks, voting on this, please uh, subscribe. I didn't do it as a ruse just to get you to subscribe to the YouTube channel. <laughs> Many of you have done that already, but I will refresh the page and give you the result right now uh, about who has won this final, uh, which we know isn't final in any way, really, but been a lot of fun. And thank you again uh, to both of you have been amazing tonight, as you have been uh, through the earlier heats, uh, both Jerry and to Michael. But the results, shall I do it in a, in a kind of a voice, uh, Britain's Got Talent, long pause style, 32 votes came in tonight for this final of <laughs> to vote where to live in Portugal, the best place. Yeah, only 32. Uh, that means that people haven't voted yet. Do we need to wait? For shall I wait a bit longer? Shall I, sh shall yeah. I, leave, I leave a really long pause? Yeah. <laughs> Must be wrong, Carl, because I voted 33 times. Oh, stop it, everybody. We don't, look, we we're trying to shake off the voting controversy thing here. I didn't, I didn't. I'm, I'm kidding. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm going to give you a little bit for a second. Yeah. I think you would probably agree with me. Oh, hold on. So um, I'm going to refresh one more time and give you the final result now. It is. It's going to go to Central Portugal, folks. 57%. 57%. Well done, Jerry. And Lisbon and Targish. Thank you. Forty-three percent. So, so um, uh, Jerry, I, I'm looking at the figures. Here. I'm not seeing you, but you're 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 sort of skipping around the ring like Muhammad Ali, basically. At this point, how do you feel? Absolutely, yes. Dancing around, yes. Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> and, uh, I, so I get the prize. Then do I, Carl? Remind me again what it is. Uh, it's Jerry Lawler buying you lunch. Oh, yes, that's it. Right. Thank you. Which would have been great if it had been Michael. Uh, but uh, I hope you enjoy your lunch with yourself. <laughs> At a date of your choosing. Uh, enjoy. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. And well, Michael, well done. Well yeah. done. Uh, well, it was great. It was really good. Well done, Jerry. Congratulations. Yeah, close call, wasn't it? Yeah, it was close. It was close. It was good. Yeah. It mm -hmm. was really good. It wasn't Brexit close, but it was pretty close. Um, and sorry to mention that at this mo this jubilant moment. Um, so Michael, thank you again. Uh, fantastic runner up tonight. Uh, thanks everybody. Benoit uh, from John. We are going to stick around for a little bit longer, but gentlemen, that was fantastic. Audience, you were brilliant as well with all your comments and heckling and, and uh, uh, additional co comments that were made that were very helpful to people, I think. Um, so yes, thank you very much, Jerry. Thank you very much, Michael. Thank you everybody. I'm going to end the.